Hey everyone, it's VM Campos, Magic fan. Now, I used to play Magic back in the 90s. I gave it up for a long time, and now I'm back. Well, I've got a great bit of nostalgia right here. This is the set of Magic that I used to play back in my day. This is Magic the Gathering 4th Edition. This is a set that came out in 1995. This set was out when I first played. This is a little box of nostalgia. So I'm going to open this brand new box of Magic 4th Edition expansion set. We'll take a long, slow look at all of the cards of my youth. We'll talk about the good ones, the nostalgic ones, the valuable ones. Check the description to see the websites that I'm talking about because I've pulled up a bunch of valuable information on 4th edition. Magic the Gathering is the first in the Deckmaster series of trading card games from Wizards of the Coast. Featuring more than 300 different cards, Magic draws its players into a multiverse of infinite possibilities. Some cards are fairly common, some uncommon, some rare. Each player must have a deck. There's always more for you to discover in Magic, and the more you play and trade, the more Dominia's ever-changing adventure will intrigue you. In Magic the Gathering, you'll never play the same game twice. So a few things of note. We have common, uncommon, and rares in this set. There was no such thing as a mythic rare yet. You'll also see there's no expansion symbols in this set. So there's no way to tell what the rare or the uncommon or common is unless you looked it up in a magazine. The internet wasn't really commonly used. Notice also we have the phrasing of dominias. At the time, uh, we used dominia or dominaria rather interchangeably. Magic's 25th anniversary with a brand new core set of Return to Dominaria Basically, it's a return to this plane, the original plane of magic. 895 in 1995 dollars. Taking a quick look at an inflation calculator, that would be $14.69 in 2017 dollars. So when I crack this open, we will see what we get. This is basically 60 cards. It's not a pre-constructed deck, it's just 60 cards. I don't think it's really playable out of the box. We'll see. We've got several cards to be on the lookout. So over at mtg.donglare.com, there's a great list to see at a glance of what's the valuable stuff in a set. Here's a few that we're going to look out for in rares. Armageddon, Ball Lightning, Birds of Paradise, Howling Mine... Mind Twist, Stasis, Sylvan Library, Wrath of God, Zombie Master. In Uncommon, we'll look for Animate Dead, Black Vice, Counterspell, Strip Mine, and a few more. And actually in Common, Lightning Bolt. Those are a few of the ones to look out for once we open this up. I've got another price list up at that Don Glare website. Uh, the most valuable card is going to be Land Tax. And we've got Mana Vault, Sylvan Library, Strip Mine, etc. Again, check the links in the description to see the site. But let's get to it. I almost can't bring myself to open this. I haven't opened this sort of pack in like 20 years um, I have one from back in the day and uh, 1995 so yeah that's been a while all right we can't go back now these kinds of decks uh, don't really exist anymore this is just a random set of 60 cards plus rule book. What's a rule book? You'll see in a moment. We have dual decks which are also going away. We have boosters, 
bundles and boxes okay opening it up that's sealed as well wow 22 years ago i did this mountain now what's that right in the middle that's the rule book they used to include a pretty comprehensive rule book in these things so you can get up to speed also shout out to cardkingdom.com no they are not sponsoring me but yes i have got a cool play mat all right let's see what's coming up i don't know what order these are in if they're the rares are first i have no idea we'll just discover it together So I got this off of eBay, of course, and I'm paranoid that these are going to be repacks, but these seem to still be sealed originally, so I'm happy. Okay, that was a little tougher than I thought, but here it comes. After you get a good grip on that gold foil, it actually opens up pretty easily. Okay, here we go. Classic planes. Look at this. Tap to add red mana to your mana pool. Whoa, these feel amazing. Brand new. I haven't felt new 4th edition cards in 20 years. I'm going to repeat myself so many times, sorry. But this is total nostalgia trip. Doug Schuler. Okay, so we're gonna get some um, lands first. Beautiful island. Now that's an island. Mark Pool. Forest. Beautiful. Look at that little critter right there. Christopher Rush. Old man symbol old border, old copyright notice, no collector number, no symbol. Forest, plains, that looks like a plains, wow. Swamp, so foreboding, branch, beautiful. There's alternate art, no, no full arts at this time, just alternate art, my favorite mountain. Island, so beautiful. Uh, just double checking here. Both of those mountains, Doug Schuler. Both of these islands, Mark Pool. So beautiful. Uh, plains, that's the same as before. Jesper Murfors. Dan Fraser. The same mountain. This is a different uh island mark pool forest so nice look at so lush here's a different plains by jesper murfers another plains uh different kind of swamp the branch is pointing up from dan fraser different island the fourth, I already had that island, I think. No, that's a, yeah, that's a, I already had that one. Forest, there's another style of forest. I'll lay them out in a moment. I'll just put them all down for the moment, then we're going to get started there. So, um, I had the two different planes. There's his signature. So, two of the planes... I believe there's three different arts then one and two the three different islands the three different island arts nice uh, swamps uh, two of the three styles oh wait a minute uh, no it's all three it's just very subtly no, it, it, yeah, it's just two styles at the moment. The three mountains, the white one, the blue one, and the orange one. 
And as for the forests, uh, the three forests. I'll probably get the other ones later. Anyway, let's keep going. What do we have here? Crusade. White, white. All white creatures get plus one, plus one. Mark pool. So great for that white weenie deck. Fungusaur. Oh, I love this little guy. Three and a green. Two, two. Back in the day, we said summon Fungusaur, not creature Fungusaur. At the end of any turn in which Fungusaur receives damage but does not leave play, put a plus one, plus one counter. So it gets stronger the more damage it gets, and it lives. And look at this flavor text. Rather than sheltering her young, the female Fungusaur often injures her own offspring, thereby ensuring their rapid growth. Dan Gallon. Clockwork Avian. I never had this one back in the day. Artifact Creature. 5 casting cost. 0 4. Flying. When Clockwork Avian comes into play, put 4 plus 1 plus 0 counters on it. At the end of any combat in which Clockwork Avian is assigned to attack or block, remove a counter. And then plus X and tap. Put X plus 1 counters on Clockwork Avian. You may have no more than 4 of these counters on Clockwork Avian. Use the ability only during your upkeep. Okay, so one of the things you'll see in these older cards is that some of them range from really powerful to really overcosted. Expensive, not that powerful, not that great of an ability. But look at that art, Randy Asplin Faith. I haven't seen his art and seen his name in a long time. Artifact down there. Okay, so here is the the rule book. This is a video all in and of itself. And the Duelist magazine. This was a magazine. This was the inside scoop that you would go off and read instead of going to their website. Uh, I don't think they had a website yet. But they, they'd be coming along eventually. And yeah, this, this is the magic rules. With the creation of magic, which is the coast introduced an entirely new game, etc., etc., blah, blah, blah. A fantasy trading card game by Richard Garfield, etc. So it's breaking down everything. What's an artifact? What's a creature? The phases of a turn. And things were different. The rules were a little different back in the day. Resolving fast effects. House rules. Index and credits. And it goes on in its little book, black and white. This is an untapped creature. There is your graveyard. There was no exile zone exactly. That term didn't quite exist. So a lot of little text. I remember reading this, hardcore reading it from beginning to end, making sure I understand what the rules were. Then uh, we've got that. Oh, there's the channel artwork. And yep, subscribe today. One year, six issues, seventeen ninety-five. Anyway, back to the cards. Green Ward. Oh my God, these were so narrow. Okay, one white enchant creature. This is an aura. Target creature gains protection from green. The protection granted by Green Ward does not destroy Green Ward. So the explanatory text was kind of weird back in the day. Basically, this sort of gives shroud to a creature against green uh, spells and it's saying the protection won't destroy its own aura well of course not this is a white aura why would it destroy itself anyway oh hypnotic specter this is one of the ones that's just so popular back in the day uh one and black black some specter flying and for and two two an opponent damaged by specter discards a card at random from his or her hand. Ignore this effect if opponent has no cards. There's so many times that it says, ignore this effect if they don't have enough life and blah, blah, blah. There was no trace of aught on that illuminated face. Samuel Coleridge, Phantom. So everyone loved this one back in the day. It was flying. Flyers are hard to deal with. Every time you get hit by it, you have to discard a card at random. Very good pull. I'm happy about that one. Water Elemental. For a long time, I never noticed that the Elemental was right here. And he's holding the guy's ore. Three, blue, blue, for a five, four, vanilla. Just flavor text. Unpredictable as the sea itself, Water Elemental's shift without warning from tranquility to tempest. Capricious and fickle, they flow relentlessly from one shape to another, expressing their mood with their physical form. Jasper 
or Jeff A. Menges. I forgot to give a shout out to these other ones. Uh, Dan Frazier, which did one of the lands. Um, we used to call this one the Hippie, Hypnotic Spectre. Uh, Doug Schuler, he also did one of the lands. And Jeff Menges. Uh, what else? Okay, Soulnet Artifact for one. Uh, activated ability, one colorless. Gain one life when a creature is put into the graveyard from play. Use this effect only once each time a creature is put into the graveyard. So you gain life when a creature goes to the graveyard, if you pay for it. By Damon Willick. Artifact, Felwar Stone. Oh, nice. Uh, two artifact, tap. Add one mana to your mana pool. This mana may be of any type that any land opponent controls can produce. Play this ability as an interrupt. Back in the day, we had something called interrupts, which were faster than instants. Nowadays, they've been eroded that an interrupt is an instant. Uh, so never mind about that. But basically, this is cool. You, you can generate mana of any kind that your opponent's lands can control. Now, what about dual lands and all of that? I'm not a rules lawyer, but the answer is yes. What do you have that I cannot obtain? Mersil called the Pretender. Quentin Hoover. Ooh, Spirit Shackle. Uh, this one used to be so good back in the day. Black Black, Enchant Creature, Aura. Put a minus zero, minus two counter on target creature every time it becomes tapped. These counters remain even if Spirit Shackle is removed. So slowly kill your opponent's creatures every time they tap to attack. Ed Beard Jr. Wow, the, this, I, the one that I have in my collection is just so old and beat up that it's just amazing to see a brand new pack fresh copy. Look at that art, almost monochromatic. Angry Mob. Oh, I have the version from the dark, I think. Um, two white white summon mob. Trample. During your turn, Angry Mob has power and toughness each equal to two, plus the total number of swamps opponent controls. During other turns, Angry Mob has power and toughness of 2-2. Two, two. So during my opponent's turn, I've only got a 2-2. Two, two. But during their turn, it gets two, plus how many swamps they have. Mm -hmm. Drew Tucker. Oh, I think I saw this. Abomination. Look at that amazing Mark Tedden art. Three... Black Black for a 2-6. At the end of combat, destroy all green and white creatures blocking or blocked by Abomination. Look at that little guy. You want to give him a little kiss? Beautiful monochromatic Abomination that really hates on green and white. Look at that. I haven't gotten any red, any red spells yet. Oh, Oasis land tap prevent one damage to any creature uh brian snowdy so probably have been eroded nowadays to actually say land desert and you can use it in amon ket and hour of devastation i never had this card back in the day just saw it in magazines always wanted it, and look at that i've got a copy of it now non-basic land Oh, Merfolk of the Pearl Trident, such nostalgia. For one drop in blue, you get a 1-1 one, one. vanilla Merfolk. Most human scholars believe that Merfolk are the survivors of sunken Atlantis, humans adapted to the water. Merfolk, however, believe that humans sprang from Merfolk who adapted themselves in order to explore their last frontier. Art by Menges. I forgot to say that if you notice, all of these are white border. Back in the day, white border sets were reprint sets. Nowadays, everything's black border. But in the old days, a brand new set that had brand new cards was a black border. And there were some reprint sets that had the white border. Amulet of Krug, I believe, eventually came out in a set called Antiquities. Two, artifact... Two and tap. Prevent one damage to any creature or player. So underpowered, so overcosted. This should be like a zero cost and a tap nowadays. Among the first allies Urza gained were the people of Krug. 
As a sign of friendship, Urza gave the healers of the city potent amulets. Afterwards, thousands journeyed to Krug in hopes of healing. Margaret Organ Keen. She was a really cool artist that would always put a checkerboard pattern in most of her art. And again, looking at the art, nowadays the art is so good on a technical level, but give me the old art. I'm biased. I'm nostalgic. I think the old art was also very good at really focusing on what the thing is. The new art is really nice in that it paints everything. But look at that. The Felwar stone is just the stone. It's glowing. It's on a watercolor background. The amulet is you don't need to see the person. You don't need the whole story. It's the amulet. That's what sticks in your mind, I think. Today's art is very nice, but it's too busy. It's too good. Terror. I love this one. Instant removal. One and a black. Bury or destroy. Target non-black, non-artifact creature. Ron Spencer. The old days they called it bury. Now it's destroy. Look at this off-center, emaciated figure. Abject terror. He's dead. Twiddle. Classic. Uh, one blue. Instant tap or untap. Target land, artifact, or creature. So blue mages messing with people since 1995. Rob Alexander. And what would you say that art depicts? I always thought it was like some weird carcass of a whale or something. Uh, I still don't know. Speaking of still, I haven't gotten any red spells at all. The red hate is real. War Mammoth, three, one green, three, three, trample. Summon Mammoth. I didn't think Mammoth's would ever hold a candle to a well-trained battle horse. Then one day I turned my back on a drunken soldier. His blow never landed. Micha flung the brute over ten meters. Good Mammoth by Menges. Oh yes, the COP's Circle of Protection. So white had this cycle of circles of protection for every color as well as artifacts. It's an enchantment um for one and one white uh one and one white with then you tap one colorless mana to prevent all damage against you from one black source if a source deals damage to you more than once in a turn you may pay one more each time to prevent it this would have been amazing if it could also prevent damage to your creatures but it's damage to you and this is direct damage from black so that'd be like a drain life and you prevent it if they blast you with a drain life for 10 just pay one, and you're like, nope, I'm protected. Here's another Jesper Mirfurs. There we go, red, and it's a great one. Stone Rain, destroy target land, the end. Now, it is a sorcery, and it's one uh, red and two more. Daniel Gillon. Look at that brutal Stone Rain. There's another one from a different set with some great flavor text that said something like, uh, imagine the cloud that births that rain. And there it is. Red, destroy target land. The end. Not, nothing about non-basic or anything, just any land. So this oasis. Bye-bye. Finally a red. Oh, land leeches. One, green, green. Two, two, first strike. So, two, two, first strike. The standard cure for leeches requires the application of burning embers. Alternative methods must be devised should an ember of sufficient size prove more harmful than the leech. Vervamon the Elder. Quentin Hoover, one of my favorite artists. He had this style of a sort of like cartoony effect with some realism. Looks like a little watercolor. Uh, look at the segments on that leech. Just really nice. Green. Samite Healer. I used to love this guy so much. One and one white. Uh, one one creature. Summon Cleric. Tap. Prevent one damage to any creature or player. So my healer can come in in a pinch, tap him, and uh, heal to a creature or player. Healers ultimately acquire the divine gifts of spiritual and physical wholeness. The most devout are also granted the ability to pass physical wholeness to others. Yep, that guy really likes being physically whole. Here's some more red. Giant Strength. 
uh, red red enchant creature or a target creature gets plus two plus two so okay grow your creature to red mana oh it is excellent to have a giant's strength but it is tyrannous to use it like a giant william shakespeare measure for measure justin hampton look at that swole critter muck dwellers i love this one for the art drew tucker he was one of the most visually interesting artists very abstract most of the time um murk dwellers uh three plus black for a two two when attacking and not blocked murk dwellers gets plus two plus zero until end of turn so you get a four two for four mana if unblocked when Raganorn unsealed the catacombs, he found more than the dead and their treasures. Yeah, he found the Merc Dwellers. Look at that topless Merc Dweller coming at you. She's got a little bit of hair still. And uh, just look at that beautiful watercolor background. Very simple, but it gives you that effect of just the dampness and the, and the decay. Flood. Uh, one blue enchantment and then two blue to tap creature without flying so you can lock down your opponent's non-flying creatures turn after turn dennis detweiler a dash of cool water does wonders to a clear a cluttered battlefield vibeki ragnald witches in war love this flavor text where some of it is from like real sources there was a shakespeare quotes there's this fictional text uh, self-referential stuff in the world of magic. Oh, Benelish Hero. Classic character from, like, the first set of magic. One uh, white for a 1-1 one, one creature with banding. Completely extinct. You youngsters don't know what banding was all about. It was a complicated thing. But basically, a band is a group of attacking creatures. So I can create... Uh, a band between these two basically I sort of merge them together sort of they would both attack together so I'd have this 3-3 creature that's attacking sort of if you want to block either one of them you have to block the band so they both get blocked then what happens is I assign all of the damage so it's gonna be three damage to your blocker and then the damage that comes back, I assign it, not my opponent. My opponent would send the damage first to my Benelish hero to kill her. But nope, I would send one damage to the Merc Dweller and one damage to the Benelish. And they both survive. I can uh, set the damage. Conversely, when blocking, I make a band and both of them are going to block the attacker. I distribute the damage to the attacker and I distribute the damage to my blockers. So the more banding characters I have, the bigger and stronger my defense is, plus one non-bander to kind of do some interesting things. Um, yep, sounds complicated. That's why this has been extinct for a long time. Doug Schuler. Benalia has a complex caste system that changes with the lunar year. No matter what the season, the only caste not, that cannot be attained by either heredity or money is that of the hero. Very cool art. Very proud hero. Ooh, Mons Goblins Raiders. This one was such a staple back in the day. One drop red, one one. Vanilla. Jeff Menges. The intricate dynamics of Runevelt goblin affairs are often confused with anarchy. The chaos, however, is the chaos of a thundercloud, and direction will sporadically and violently appear. Pashalik Mons and his raiders are the thunderhead that leads in the storm. Okay, Pashalik Mons, his goblin raiders. Cool, his or her. Red. Erg raiders. So we've got two types of raiders here, Erg and Mons. Summon raiders. 2-3, Damon Willock, 1 and a black. If you, do not, if you do not attack with Erg Raiders during your turn, it deals 2 damage to you at the end of turn. Erg Raiders deals no damage to you the turn it comes into play on your side. So summon sickness, because it's in the way. But this was pretty amazing. A 2 casting cost 2-3 creature. 
It could, uh, you know, take out the Benelish hero, 1-1. One, one. It could take out the Merc dwellers, the goblins raiders. But it had to attack every turn. They were restless. Flight. Uh, for one blue enchant creature, target creature gains flying. There was another much more common and uh, not as good jump, where it was also one blue, it would give a creature flying until end of turn. Well, why not make it permanent? So you can have your goblin raiders flying. Anson Maddox, great artist from back in the day. Nafs, Asp. Now that's not an apostrophe, so it's not possessive. Anyway, one green, one one. If Naf's Asp damages a player, it also deals one damage to that player during his or her next draw phase. Before then, the player may pay one to prevent this damage. Christopher Rush. Again, no rarity symbol, so off the top of my head, I don't know which is the rare, the common, and so forth. I'll have to look it up later. Shatter. One and a red. Instant destroy target artifact back in the day it was just like this is it the end destroy target land the end destroy target artifact the end this is by amy weber classic i remember this art vampire bats for one black you get a zero one turn one bats it's got flying and then with extra black mana, you can pump it up, plus one, plus zero, until end of turn. However, you cannot spend more than black black in this way each turn. So you'll only be able to get it into a 2-1 flyer. For something is amiss, or out of place, when mice with wings can wear a human face. Theodore Rothke, the bat, Anson Maddox. Uh, that doesn't really look like a human face to me. Drain Life. Classic. I use this one so often. Um, they've changed um, the casting cost and all of this throughout the, the years because check it out. It looks like it's a one and a black. It's a sorcery. But Drain Life deals one damage to a target creature or player. For each black, you pay in addition to the casting cost. You then gain one life for each one damage dealt. Then it had this weird reminder text. You cannot gain more life than the toughness of the creature or the total life of the player drain life damages. So if I pump seven black mana into that Mons Goblin Raiders, I'm not going to get seven life out of it, which, of course. But notice you can only use black mana also. Uh, this guy is completely drained. He needs a Red Bull. Doug Schuler Art. Oh my god. <laughs> Here's the other one. Jump. So, one mana, one mana. Target creature against flying. Target creature gains flying until end of turn. Instant enchantment. Which of these two would you rather have? Cool art on both of them. Mark Poole versus Anson Maddox. But obviously flight is the correct answer. I guess you can do shenanigans into turning your opponent's creatures into flying for some reason. Don't think too hard because obviously these cards are from 22 years ago. Blue Elemental Blast, one of the best cards out there from back in the day. For one simple blue mana, interrupt, which is an instant, counter target red spell, or destroy target red permanent. Technically, you can sort of use this to destroy your, your opponent's Chandra Planeswalker. A Planeswalker is a permanent. It's red. This will destroy it for one blue mana, I guess. But back in the day, you'd do it. You'd use it to destroy all of these permanents over here. Creatures are permanent. Enchantments are permanents. Everything that's red, of course. Or target counter target red spell. So the blue red hate back in the day was very powerful. Richard Thomas. Marsh Viper. Here's another one with some extinct mechanic. Three and a green. Summon Viper. One, two. Pretty high casting costs. Why? Because if Marsh Viper damages a player, he or she gets two poison counters. If a player has ten or more poison counters, he or she loses the game. So what you have to do is make this critter attack your opponent five times, and you win the game. All we had left were the black and bloated bodies. Maeveen O'Donna, Memoirs of a Soldier. 
Ron Spencer. Look at that little critter. And there's a bunch of critters, actually. Pretty scary. Grizzly bear. This is it, kids. This is why you call every 2-2 two -two creature for a 1 and a, and a mana a grizzly bear, because of this creature. The grizzly bear. Vanilla. 1 and a, and a, and a, and a mana for 2-2. Two -two. Don't try to outrun one of Dominia's grizzlies. It'll catch you, knock you down, and eat you. Of course you could run up a tree. In that case, you'll get a nice view before it knocks the tree down and eats you. Jeff Menges. Another COP. White. So I'm going to be able to prevent all that white damage from my opponent's creatures uh, for a simple one uh, colorless mana. I love that rune on the floor. That one's really stuck in my mind. Doug Schuler. Did Schuler do the other one here? No, that was Murphers. And yes, back in the day I had the whole cycle. Not as useful as you would think. You really want the circle of protection red, of course. Oh, and there's the COP blue. Cool, so I've got the black, blue, and the white. Come at me, Jace. Prevent all damage from one blue source. So there you go, 60 cards. See how much it was my mana. One, two, three, four. Only four planes. That's interesting. One, two, three, four, five islands. One, two, three, four swamps. One, two, three, four, five mountains. And one, two, three, four forests. So that's 10, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. 22 mana and then the rest just a bunch of random cards i don't think this is a viable deck at all it'd be kind of fun to give this a try i probably will do a video where i battle people with this pre-con deck which is not pre-constructed we'll see how it goes let me take a quick look at what are the uh the rares and uncommons all right so after doing a little bit of research uh, all the common cards over here, uh, Benelish, COP, Samite Healer, Red Elemental, these two flights and jumps, Flood, Twiddle, Merfolk, Vampire, Drain Life, Erg Raiders, Merc Dwellers, Terror, Shatter, Mons, Goblin Raiders, uh, Giant Strength, Stone Rain, Amulet of Crew, Grizzly Bear, Marsh Viper, Naf's Asp, Land Leeches, and the Mammoth. Those are all the commons. Let's look at the uncommons. Here they are in Wooburg order. Uh, Angry Mob. Okay. Green Ward. I guess all the ward cycles were also uncommon. Water Elemental. Uncommon, so big. Abomination. Mm -hmm. uh, the Hippie. Hypnotic Spectre. Spirit Shackle. I didn't think that was uncommon. Clockwork Avian. I thought that was the rare. Felwar Stone, I thought that was a rare, but that's uncommon also. Soul Net, surprised. And the Oasis, those are all of the uncommons in this 60 card pre con, non con deck. And I only got two uh, rares. One is the Fungasaur. So the 2-2 two, two creature that can become a big old fatty if it keeps getting damage. Technically, at the end of any turn, any turn, in which Fungasaur receives damage but does not leave play. So you could do the combo with your Prodigal Sorcerer, which you tap the Sorcerer to deal 1 damage to target creature or player. You could be pinging your Fungasaur with your Tim, we used to call him Tim, and uh, he's going to get bigger during the turns because uh, tapping tim would uh, be an instant so during your opponent's turn ping it it becomes three three so this could get really big so okay it makes sense as a rare pretty cool if it can uh, go grow past its its youngling stage and then uh, the other rare that i got here was the crusade for white white all white creatures get plus one plus one now it is reciprocal all white creatures so your opponent's white creatures would also get this. But if you were battling, you know, a black mage, blue mage, whatever, this could be pretty devastating for your white weenie deck. 
I didn't really get any this time. I got one Benelish hero and the Samite healer. He's going to be holding back to be healing. But these would be two twos, banding. So band that with your other creature, your your Fungusaur. And so um, those were the those were the rares, uncommons right here. Uh, pretty interesting. So again, I'm really curious to play this as as a deck. I'm going to sleeve it up and battle someone in standard format and get my ass kicked really bad but i hope it'll be fun so this was really fun opening up this classic vintage fourth edition pack of cards i'm, I'm pretty sure it's just completely random there's no thought in there to make any sort of cohesive deck i'm so sure but it was really fun and uh back when magic can be encompassed in one little book of only seven dupes two pages in the palm of your hand this game has really progressed in the last 25 years in the various decades that i used to play back in the day if you're still around thanks for taking this long trip through memory lane i've got a few others i'm going to be opening up other such boxes of other such decks expansions that i used to play back in the day so be sure to subscribe to uh, get notified when those are out and this has been VM Campos see you next time